Tragedy in Lagos as container falls of truck kills nine commuters. On Good Morning Nigeria today, we shall discuss the extension of the deadline for the deposit of old Naira notes. The weekend was characterized by long queues at various automated tailor machines in an apparent scramble by Nigerians to obtain the new and redesigned narrow notes, which have been quite scarce and in short supply, despite the initial deadline of January 31st, 2023, for the old narrow notes to be deposited at the banks. Well, the scramble you talked about, Jumai, was also feared by the earlier insistence of the central bank governor that there was no going back on a deadline for depositing the old 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes, and of course, uh, getting eventually the redesigned ones. Now, the central bank governor had argued that 100 days were enough for anyone to deposit the old notes with the banks. Exactly what the president said in a, in a video that trended, but in a tra dramatic twist, the Apex Bank bowed to intense pressure from a cross-section of Nigerians and announced a 10-day extension of the deadline from January 31st, 2023 to February 10, 2023 to allow for what the CBN governor called the collection of more old notes. Quite dramatic, uh, Jumai. Now, the CBN governor explained that the Apex Bank eventually sought and obtained President Muhammadu Buhari's approval for the 10-day extension of the deadline in order to achieve more success uh, in the cash swap uh, program, especially in rural communities, after which all old notes outside the banking system would lose their legal tender status. MFLA also announced an additional seven-day grace period beginning from February 10 to February 17, 2023, in compliance with Section 20 and 22 of the CBN Act, allowing Nigerians to deposit their old notes at the CBN after the February 10 deadline, when the old currency would have lost their legal tender status. So far, the extension of the deadline for the expiry of the old Naira notes has generated mixed reactions amongst Nigerians. Why some see it as an extended period of grace uh, to deposit the old notes at the uh, money deposit banks. Others are not happy that this Apex Bank caved in to perceived pressure, particularly from politicians, to extend the deadline. Indeed, Kisley, and meanwhile, in a swift reaction, the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on New Naira Redesign and Naira Swap Policy chaired by Majority Leader of the House Al Hassan Adodogwa rejected the 10-day extension granted by the CBN for the exchange of old notes, insisting that the CBN must comply with Section 20, Subsection 3, 4 and 5 of its Act on redeeming the value of the nation's currency. Now, the present administration through the presidency had explained that the Naira redesign policy, which was announced on the 26th of October last year, became necessary to prevent further counterfeiting and, of course, corruption and the funding of terrorism, as well as to stabilize uh, the Naira and ultimately strengthen the economy. Now, what would the extension of the deadline for the expiring date of the old Naira notes douse for or increase the scramble for the new Naira notes? What more does the CBN need to do to tidy up the Naira redesign policy? Now, we shall take on these issues with our panel of guests on Good Morning Nigeria today. I am Jumai Yusuf, welcoming you to the program, the first edition for this week. I am Kingsley Yusuf, I join my colleague Jumai to also welcome you to the program. We are live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority and broadcasting from uh, Abuja Headquarters Studios. Now, in the course of the program, we we'll serve our complimentary segments, and this include Dissipar Review and Business and hopefully Sports, uh, where we can get more details of the dramatic actions that took place at the what weekend. The weekend yes, yeah. of course, uh, Juma. <laughs> uh, congratulations to Novak Djokovic. Yeah. Uh, he got his 10th Thanks. Australian Mr. Open Oppo. title and 22nd Grand Slam. Yes. And of course, the uh, debate uh, is on in some quarters, not among some of us though, about who is the greatest of all times in terms of uh, tennis. tennis. Uh, if you were to reckon with um, Grand Slam Hall, 
Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic are both equal now on yeah, 22 equal grand yes, slams. But head to head, who leads? Uh, in terms of earnings, who leads? ATP 1000, which is next to the Grand Slam, who leads? Mm. And uh, of course, overall titles, who leads? So, overall titles of, con continues to belong to Jimmy Connors. Mm. And of course, uh, Novak Djokovic is gradually closing in on that. But in terms of uh, generational comparison, there's no doubt about it. And that, Djokovic. Uh, Djokovic, of course, it stands uh, out. Stands out. He's uh, the goat of long, uh, uh, the new that's the greatest of all time <laughs> yes. uh, that that we have seen. Congratulations to you. I would say this uh, not merely to applaud him, but so that others can learn lessons. I, I just keep asking myself since the days of Unduka Odizo mm. uh, yeah, and uh, here in Nigeria, and I remember I mentioned this sometime last week in the course of the program that Tony Moore, mm. uh, Tony Moore played tennis in East Central State and uh, later Anambra State, and then before, before he relocated to the U.S. Now, his son uh, played, 25-year-old son, played at the Australian Open and got to uh, the third round. Yeah, the third so, round. where are our tennis players? How many tennis courts, for instance, do we have in Abuja? Take a look at your state. Ask how many viable tennis courts are there in your state capital or elsewhere. A clay court is one of the easiest to construct. Yes. Now, the clay court season is just around the corner. What is it that we are doing to encourage our people? So the master of the clay court will show his expertise. Uh, well, of course, <laughs> it was out in Georgia. Yeah, exactly. But we didn't ask ourselves, uh, look, uh, clay court, as I said, is one of the easiest yes. uh, to construct. The same question that we are raising now uh, about uh, tennis, same questions you can also ask about swimming. When you go to the and Olympics, both. yeah, you go to the Olympics, you go to the All African Games, Swimming provides uh, an opportunity for a lot of meta hall. How and many we have so many of them in the river and areas. How, can many, swim like how fish. many swimming pools do we have in our country? It's good morning, Nigeria, once again, and welcome to the program. Give them a food for thought. Alaji Day Bello has a high answer the morning news. Alaji Day is a, you know, is a football enthusiast, too. I hope you didn't get a heart attack this weekend. Good morning, okay. Kingsley. Good morning, Jumai. I used to be a football enthusiast, but mm -hmm. I stopped over personal reasons. Oh. And here is the AM news. President Mohamed Buhari has approved the extension of deadline for the cash swap program by 10 days beginning from January 31st to 10th of February 2023. Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Gabriel Mefele, announced this while briefing journalists after an audience with President Mohamed Buhari at his Dawra residence in Katsina State. Based on the foregoing, we have today sought and obtained Mr. President's approval for the following. One, a 10-day extension of the deadline from January 31, 2023 to February 10, 2023 to allow for collection of more old notes legitimately held by Nigerians and achieve more success in cash swap in our rural areas, in our villages and, and communities, after which all old notes outside the CBN loses their legal tender status. Our CBN staff currently on mass mobilization and monitoring together with officials of the EFCC and ICPC will work together to achieve these objectives in the coming days. Two, a seven-day grace period beginning on February 10 to February 17, 2023, in compliance with Section 20, Subsection 3 and Section 22 of the CBN Act, allowing Nigerians to deposit their old notes at the CBN after the February deadline, when the old currency would have lost its legal tender status. And Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji has expressed formal appreciation of the government and people of Kano State to President Muhammadu Buhari for approving the extension of the initial deadline for the cash swap program of the CBN. The Governor said that these while speaking to newsmen in Daura after an audience with the President. We are very, very happy. He explained to us the time is extended and the quantity of new Naira will increase so that the suffering of the people will be reduced. We informed him that uh, Kano is the most popular state in the Federation and also the commercial nervous center of the northern part of, of Nigeria. 
second to Lagos, but still we have 24 local government without banks. And most of the banks are concentrated within Kano Metropolitan. So you can imagine the suffering of the rural people in terms of uh, a cash transaction. But we are happy that the time has been extended and also the quantum of the Naira notes will be increased. A lot of Nigerians are given a sign of relief and clearly appreciative of the CBN extension of the collection date of old Naira notes and the cash swap program. Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy because there are no ad tenders now. We don't know how we do with our money, sir. The, the fact that they, they, they actually postpone the dates is not a, a medium for you to, to just feel relaxed or something. Now, of course, you should speed up before the deadline day. If they can give condition to educate us more, whether we are going to be using the old money and using the new money together. I'm not talking about the people in the city. I'm talking about the people in the village. I am happy for I'm the happy new extension of Umbas. currency swap. Umbas. Now we'll try and see. All we have to do is to do... Meanwhile, the House of Representatives at the committee investigating implementation of the cashless policy has projected a 10 days extension granted by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, for the exchange of old Naira notes. Reacting to the extension, Chairman of the House at the committee and Majority Leader Al Hassan Ado Dugua in a statement insists that the CBN must comply with sections 20, subsections 3, 4, and 5 of the CBN Act, which, amongst others, made provisions for redeeming value of currency. He noted that the 10 day extension for the exchange of old Naira notes is not the solution and that respect for the principle of rule of law in a developed democracy like Nigeria is necessary. The statement adds that CBN officials should use the window left and appear before the committee for interaction or risk being compelled by a warrant of arrest. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the inclusion of all ex-servicemen of the Nigerian Armed Forces in the payment of debarment allowance. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Rabo, stated this at the anniversary of the 28 regular course members of the Nigerian Defense Academy in Abuja. We took the magnanimity of the Commander-in-Chief. Of course, a representation that was made to him by the Minister and he was magnanimous enough to look at it again and made the approval that everyone who once served the military should be catered for. And I think that that's something that I believe is legendary. We thank the magnanimity of the President and Commander-in-Chief would appreciate the enormity of the positive impact which this uh, revised policy on debarment has on the veteran community. And uh, it was a black Sunday in Lagos when a truck conveying a 20 feet container lost control on Ojo Legba Bridge. The container fell off the truck and landed on a commercial bus picking passengers under the bridge. The fatal accident claimed the lives of nine persons, four males, three females and two children. A female passenger was however rescued alive and is said to be currently receiving treatment at the trauma center. And in a reaction, the Corps Marshal Federal Road Safety Corps, Dada Alibi, has expressed deep concerns over the fatal crash that occurred Sunday, January 29, 2023, on Ujuelegu Bridge, Lagos State, which killed nine people and another crash that claimed 11 lives at Soka Bridge on Lagos Bini Highway. The Corps Marshal, in a statement, recommends the construction of barricades against articulated vehicles on Ujuelegu Bridge as a permanent solution to the reoccurring crashes on Soka Bridge along the Lagos Bini Expressway, he cautions commuters against route and speed limit violation. And that's the news and Good Morning Nigeria continues with Kingsley and Jumai after the break. 
The 20th edition of the PMB Administration Scorecard Series will feature the Honorable Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mala Muhammad Musabello, date Monday, 30th January 2023, time 10.30 a.m., venue National Press Centre, Radio House, Abuja. The event will be broadcast live by NTA, FRCN and Vaughan and streamed on the social media handles of the Federal Minister of Information and Culture. Announcer, Mrs. Ledia Shehu Jafia MNI, Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Information and Culture. Introducing an all-time mega offer. Get over 50% discount in the Airtel Home Broadband Mega Offer. Buy a router for just 10,000 Naira and get up to 240 gigabyte or a MiFi for 5,000 Naira and get up to 125 gigabyte bonus data. More data, more you. Reliable Home Broadband Buy. Airtel. The Smartphone Network. This is to invite the general public to the commissioning of Malam Alu Agro Allied Company Limited, an unveiling of the tallest flagpole in Nigeria. Special guest of honor, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCFR President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Host Honorable Farouk Adamo Ali, Chairman. Malam Alo Agro Allied Company Limited. Date 31st January 2023. Venue Branding Kudu, Jigawa State. Time 12 p.m. prompt. Announcer Mansur Dao Aliyu, Group General Manager. Malam Alo Agro Allied Company Limited. Our pastors, our imams, in every church, in every mosque, please. Realize that in the course of praying for peaceful and transparent elections, we all have duties beyond prayers. If we want a stable society before, during and after the elections, what should you be saying to those that worship with you? All Sundays and all Fridays, you are saddled with the responsibility of bringing up good generations. It is therefore your duty to both man and God to ensure peace all the time no matter about elections alone, people talk to people and people listen. Talk to your followers. Make them listen to ensure peaceful 2023 elections. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Today, we are here to tell you that while we may not be there yet, our military and other security agencies have succeeded and are succeeding in substantially restoring security across the nation. As far as the daunting security challenges we face are concerned, we can tell you that the worst is over. And never again will terrorists and bandits and their cohorts hold sway in our country. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Nigeria, now we come to the FC, not the party, now one man be a choice. Nigeria, now we come to the FC, not the party, now one man be a choice. Who be the president we need? Who be the president we go go? People of Nigeria, don't talk, oh! Them Sena Ashiwaju Bolatini who them want as president of Nigeria. Our country people get many reasons we make them all agree, say. Now Ashiwaju Bolatini who them choose for this president election. Yes, so oh. Bolatini who na mad be sapi. Anything we him put in hand, he dey work well. Ah. He do better work for Lagos State when he be governor. Till today, Lagos people still enjoy from all the better better things we jabrata for Lagos. People of Nigeria, he good to make we vote for who sabi. As it can't be so, make we all come out for election day and vote for Lagos Ahmed Tinubu as president of Nigeria. Vote Senator Kashim Shetima as a vice president. Vote APC, the party with the broom. Who be the president? We go vote. You're watching Good Morning Nigeria on the network service of the NTA. Next on the program is Business News with Kule Adeye. Figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, have indicated that the agricultural sector's contribution to gross domestic product in 2022 was positive. To maintain the trend, a development economist, Dr. Emeka Okengu, said priority areas in 2023 should include 
rural development, crop production, livestock development, research and funding of institutions. On street agriculture for what it is, you know, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture should be a ministry that superintends standards. Now, if I'm going to be a ministry that superintends standards, then it simply means that standards have to be established that they can superintend. Uh, there must be an alignment between the subnationals and the nationals in first agri policies. Okay, then agri programs. Okay, then agri funding. All right, you, you can have the federal government having a different policy from the state government, and then having you know divergent uh, funding and regimes is not going to work. So first and foremost is to close the rank. And then let's be able to treat Nigeria as a whole. He also called for more partnership with the private sector. With Business News, I'm Kole Adeyeye. That was the Business News Package on Good Morning Nigeria. Up next is New Super Review. Newspaper reviewer Chukudi Okole Baja is in the studio. Good morning. Jomai, good morning. How are you today? A beautiful morning, actually. I'm fine, and Kinsley is also doing fine. Uh, I, 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 you can speak uh, uh, stoutly on his behalf. He looks fine every inch of the way. Exactly. <laughs> I did. I slept well. After a marathon somewhere for three days, mm. I was fagged out. The rest shows. If Claire had come here to slap that Tuesday boy thing on me, <laughs> I would have fought her. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, let's great. begin. Let, 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 let's quickly go to the review of the papers. We have uh, some papers here to review and we'll begin with the Nigerian pilot. And just below the mouth's head, Serap asks Buhari to probe attack on Peter Obi. Serap asks Buhari to probe attack on Peter Obi. You find details on page 8. Black Sunday. Children among nine killed in container accident in Lagos Bridge. You want to know more? You go to page 7. General elections. Closed schools allow students to vote. Nance tells FG. You find the details on page 8. At the bottom plate of the pilot newspaper, troops eliminate top Boko Haram commander, 32 other terrorists. You find the details on page 5. Three police officers killed as gunmen attack a boy Enugu border checkpoint. Details on page 5. Governor Ganduje makes U-turn over Buhari's visit to Kano. Details on 9. Another 11 passengers burnt to death in Ondo auto crash. You find the details on page 7. NDLEA bus trans border cartel arrest five kingpins, seizes 27.50 kgs of skunk. And at the bottom plate of the uh, Nigerian pilot, Dumbata moves telecoms investment inflow from $36 billion to $70 billion in eight years. You find the details on page six and the headlines in the new Nigerian new uh, Nigerian pilot January thirty first deadline for old Naira notes CBN bows with riders extends ongoing currency swap deadline for January from January thirty first to February ten over seventy five percent of two point seven trillion Naira held outside banking system recovered says CBN Governor MFLA, says only 500 billion Naira out of 3.23 trillion currencies were in circulation in 2022. That Buhari approved extension to enable Nigerians change to redesigned notes. <coughs> yes, sir? Well, I should take all first. Uh, I think you can also take Daily Trust newspaper. Okay, uh, in the Daily Trust newspaper, below the masthead, we have 20 killed in Lagos on Do Road, crashes you find details on page 23 get us two bikes food stuff kidnappers of kaduna villagers tell relatives you find details on page 17 after controversy buhari visits kanu to commission eight projects you find that on page six fg under pressure to probe herders 
killers, killings in Nasarawa. That's the headlines, the Daily Trust newspaper. McBan says it's war crime, blaze, blames Autumn. NBA, National Human Rights Commission, seek compensation for victims' families. My hands are clean. That's coming from the Benue State Governor, Autumn. ACF, NCM <coughs> demand investigation. You find all the details on page four. Brain drain. Nigeria may end up without doctors. That's from NARD. Plat two governorship peace pact. CP storms out of venue. You find details on page 10. FG cautions against phone applications, pledges data privacy. And the picture story you see there, some of the anti-bomb gadgets deployed nationwide by the police, Nigerian police force in Ikeja, Lagos, ahead of the 2023 general elections that was yesterday and mixed reactions as cbn extends narrow deadline to february 17 1.9 trillion mopped up as a rider reps reject extension vow to sign arrest warrant against mfla Kisley. okay uh, let's take a look also at the front page of the leadership newspaper Above the name flag, the following headlines. OB promises to transform 20 million out-of-school children. Gunmen kill two soldiers and three policemen in a boy. And below the name plate, uh, you have uh, briefing there, and it's a fact check. Our residents keeping vigil at ATMs to get new Naira notes. And then customs dumps scanners at a paper port, orders 100% cargo examination. Naira Swap, that's the uh, kicker. Relief, as President Muhammad Buhari extends deadline by 10 days. Legal fireworks, that's the kicker for the headline for the lead story. CSOs, Sands, Caution, Atiku, and Tinubu against destructive campaigns. Say, resort to personal attacks indicates they have nothing to offer and want candidates against hitting up polity. ACF demands probe of pastoralists and butchers killing in Nasarawa. 11 burnt to death in Undo auto crash. And Buhari fel felicitates with Olutayo Shoyode at 80. Olutayo Shoyode is uh, the in-law to Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. Shoyode is the father of his wife. Chukudi. <coughs> Um, you, you dropped um, a headline, uh, one before the last one there, where some people are cautioning the presidential candidates of the PDP and the APC to go easy on the brickbats happening be, uh, between the two of them, especially. My people say that if a child is too susceptible to lamentation, crying, you dare not take a, a dead body close to the child. You begin to find it difficult for you to take a dead body close to the child. Mm. I think they have to do something about it. It's being, um, you know, it's, it's been taken to a level that might not speak very well of, uh, of the two of them. So let them take that advice. But let me go to what concerns many Nigerians now. CBN bows, and that was a, a headline opportunity, of course. Extends ongoing swap. From January 31 to February 10, that's uh, exchanging the old Naira notes, 200, 500, and 1,000 for, uh, for the new ones. Now, this is good because um, for me, what the fate of the rural you know, person would be in that situation has always bothered me. Uh, but um, I was happy when the uh, commercial banks and POS were mandated especially to go collect money from the hinterland. Uh, but the extension, of course, is going to come as a big relief to these people, mm -hmm. many of whom were still on tenterhooks yes. over what to do because the deadline had loomed. It would have been uh, tomorrow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, 31st uh, January. So that is good. And already some businesses some banks have stopped collecting <coughs> their old Naira notes. Even yeah, they, they, they have stopped just two days ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing that it was extended. Uh, but... Um, we have to say um, uh, thank you to the president for uh, having second thoughts about it. You see, when I hear all this brouhaha about uh, Emefile, I begin to ask. He's supposed to, a mandate for his arrest is supposed to be issued today if what we have been reading, you know, is true. 
Uh, he's supposed to be arrested today for not appearing, you know, before the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. You begin to ask, is it just to appear before them or to get them, to get him rather, the CBN. To clarify. To, uh, to yeah. clarify a few From things areas, or to get yeah. them to reverse their stance on the uh, on the deadline for the and if the last case is the case then it becomes intractable yes, exactly. because M. Fille would seem to be obeying just the instruction of the president so is it really up M. Fille street uh, uh, for this deadline not to happen well, and all that, that? is up for discussion it's, it's yes, up for discussion they're, they're, they're the ones who are going to have to clarify that it's very important but to me again What's important is that the CBN is saying that 75% of the 2.7 trillion, 2.7 trillion naira held outside the banking system is now sheltered in banks. They are saying that in 2022, what they had in, what, what, what they could account for was 500 billion naira. So where has all this money been hidden? And for what purpose? Well, I, want we'll to believe, to that I want that's to believe. I want to discussion on the. On I the want to believe that uh, the CBN wouldn't lie about such exactly. a matter. Exactly, uh, that's up okay. for discussion on the program today. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. that's great. So we're going to hear yeah, from yeah, experts. Yeah. Yeah. But, but before, because the, the guests that we have, uh, yes. uh, not uh, all of them will have a legal background. I just want to uh, yes. raise this issue and also make a comment. What is it that the legislature, that is to say the National Assembly in this case, is pursuing? Because I, am, I have difficulty understanding the threats and counter threats being issued. Yes, legislative summons are legal. In other words, the legislature, either in plenary or by his committee or through his committee, can summon any person to appear before it. Oh. And it will be contemptuous if you decline to, uh, to uh, uh, honor the summons uh, without good cause. For instance, the person is indisposed, for instance, the person is not immediately available, and so on and so forth. But I, I have difficulty understanding the sulfurous threats issued from the House of Reds. What is it all about? Well, well, just because, because I, I have difficulty understanding it. It is hazy. <coughs> They are saying, look, eh, that the CBN must comply or abide by the provisions of Section 20 and the subsections that they have listed there yes. of the CBA Act 2007. And I will humbly suggest that eh, they should go and read those subsections themselves very closely. I read it also in, in, in the, together with Section 22 of the CBN Act. So is, is the House, the legislature, for instance, the National Assembly, now seeking to also usurp the functions of the CBN. If there are specific issues you are talking about, you can raise those issues. Yeah. But to say that you are rejecting a deadline, you can reject the deadline, but you have no right or you have no powers to impose a new deadline on the CBN. No, that's that that's would be the, an executive the, <clears throat> precisely the, no, that would be a, that would be that would be a legislative overreach. Mm. The deadline we're talking about was issued by I'm the CBN. I'm saying that's the job of the executive. It's not that of the legislature. Absolutely. That's and, it. And then, and then if, if there are conflicting uh, views on the provision of the law, the constitution again is also very clear. Go to section 6 and you will find the powers and duties and responsibilities of the judiciary. Yes. The <laughs> power of interpretation belongs to the judiciary. So it is not you now engaging in legislative judgment to say you must do this, you must, yes, you can, you can seek, you know, to uh, issue directives and so on and so forth. But if the CBN feels that those directives are contrary to what the law is, then of course it can decline to, to accept. To appear, uh, actually, appear. No, not Take to appear, not, not the matter of appearance. It can but must he appear? <clears throat> it can, that, no, he can, can be summoned. I've already, already, yeah. already spoken about What I'm talking about them, is right. saying that, look, you are rejecting the deadline that has mm. been extended. You are rejecting, you must comply. What do you want the CBN to comply with? Read. They want ask, to comply with their own date of uh, uh, June 31st no, no, no. or is it no, no, July 31st? No. There's no date like June 31st. June ends June on the 30th. 30th. June yeah. 30th, sorry. There's, there's, mm. Just hang on a second. Anyone who has studied law of banking and negotiable instruments will be familiar with all of these things. The CBN Act 
was first enacted under the Babangida regime in mm. 1991 before it was revised, was repealed, and uh, of course, reenacted in 2007. Yes. What the powers, and then, of course, the uh, large independence that the CB autonomy that the CBN now has to function. It is the business of CBN to issue legal tenders and also to withdraw the legal tender status of any notes or currencies that it has issued. That duty doesn't belong to any other person. It, else. They but don't the share it with anybody. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Yes. I just said that I, it, it's it's something. And if you are dissatisfied with this, go to the courts. Well, so, we will we'll find out the outcome at the end of the day today. Maybe there will the someone who yes. They are saying close schools so that students can go and vote. Yes, briefly. Now yeah. that's a bit intractable because mm. um, some students actually registered in school. Yeah. In which case they are free to vote there. But some of them also uh, registered at their different um, uh, places of residence, you know, their homes and all that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what level of disenfranchisement might happen to the students. But well, my suggestion is that we tailor our electoral life in such a way that some synergy is achieved. It's become a recurring thing. Students not having opportunity <laughs> to vote and all that. I think we should do something about it. Yeah, but I think not not I, this time around. Because maybe by 2027. We have to, you also have to ask yourself. Yes. There are students who have been at home for Nine how months. many months? They've lost. That, that's the sentiment of it. Uh, I'm on. talking Nine about months. their right to vote, which yes. is invaluable. It, your, the right to vote means that you, as a, a voter, you will register in a place where you can vote. So I can't go and register in Meduguri and I'm here in Abuja and I'm saying that I need to take time off work to go to Meduguri to go and vote. vote. Well, the calling so, might become unpredictable <clears throat> to them. No, no, hang on. Yeah, hang no, on no, hang let's on be fair to them. No, they don't on. know when they'll be home Where? That or is when fine. they'll be in school. That is fine. What is their population and how many of them will be affected? I'm, I'm saying this in the interest of the students themselves. Because some in the past it used to be that, oh, there could be crisis, so let the students not be on campus, mm. let them go. These are students who have lost nice. many, months many months of their academic life and even of their own lives. And you are saying they should go home. Wait. They will go home for the presidential election. Nobody's going to pay who's going to bear that cost. They will go home for the National Assembly and Governorship election. And two weeks after that one, they will go home for census. For census. No census, can, no census can be conducted in school. Let's oh, it can be conducted in school, and the, and the population figures will belong to the school and the state where they are. Well, the director no, is. No, hey, don't go into the data. Data it's time. Back. Time is over. It's <laughs> Thank okay. You to Goody for coming. It's okay. <laughs> Thank Let you. them trash it out. Uh, we'll among take a themselves break. When we return, our conversation will begin. Do stay. Our country one better. Nigeria one better. Our country one better. Nigeria one better. Who go do one for us? Tinubu, Baba Tokambo, Mama Tokambo, for a better Nigeria. Tinubu, good life, Unka. Now you we want to. Oh. Now you we need oh. Yes, so oh. people of Nigeria, they jolly for the better. We want Shele for we country so. As they ready to vote, Ashiwa Jubala Tinubu as the next president of Nigeria. Our people don't look the matter well. Say that only Bola Tinubu don't do what it everybody feels. See, now you get the experience. Where you go fit you stick make our country better, make life sweet for we and our picking them. But Latinubu don't get a better plan to chase down war for we youth, better school, the security of lives and property, unity and peace for all we country people, people of Nigeria. But this and many other better team where in don't go class. It could make we all vote Ashiwa Jupa Latinubu for president of Nigeria. Vote Kashim Shetima as vice president. Vote ABC, the party where she groom. Now you be need Operation Wild Punch covers Kaduna and Niger states. The operation was recently reorganized to also cover the critical Kaduna, Abuja Kaduna Expressway, which had a defunct standby alone operation codenamed Operation Fender Strike. Additionally, as part of the Operation Wild Punch, a subsidiary operation codenamed Operation Forest Sanity has also been launched to flesh out the terrorists from the forest that straddle Kaduna and Niger states. These efforts were geared towards fleshing out criminal elements from the Kaduna Abuja Expressway and its environs. I am pleased to inform that Kaduna Kaduna Expressway has been secured through a combined efforts of the armed forces, the police, 
and other security agencies. This message is brought to you from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. She's a wonder and light in the darkness She's beautiful oh, She's a superstar oh, nice She'll never let her mama down She's beautiful She know the fear She know they ever got a hand for them No phones at the table, please! Oh. Esther! I love you too. So I love you too. Don't forget our picky at four. I love you. Airtel, the smartphone oh. network. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise. Remember, the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Yeah, welcome back. And as a prompt for our conversation, which is an extension of Cash Swap program, here's a background report by our correspondent, Abdul Salam Jibril. These days, banking halls and banks' automated teller machines, that is ATMs, have become popular destination spots for many Nigerians. This is because of the 31st January deadline for the exchange of old Naira notes initially set by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Recall that the CBN on October 26, 2022 had announced its plan to redesign three bank notes. There have been concerns from many Nigerians over the slow spread of the new notes that includes scarcity of the notes at banks and complaints that banks ought to have stopped loading old notes in their ATMs since it will not be accepted as legal tender by the end of the month. The National Assembly and the 36 state governors had also waded in, urging the bank to extend the date to enable more Nigerians get the new notes. In an apparent U-turn, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the extension of the deadline for the cash swap program by 10 days, beginning from January 31st to the 10th of February 2023. Governor of the CBN, Godwin Emefiele, announced this while briefing journalists after an audience with President Muhammad Buhari at his Dara residence in Katsina State. Based on the foregoing, we have today sought and obtained Mr. President's approval for the following. One, a 10-day extension of the deadline from January 31, 2023 to February 10, 2023 to allow for collection of more old notes legitimately held by Nigerians and achieve more success in cash swap in our rural areas, in our villages and, and communities 
after which all old notes outside the CBN loses their legal tender status. Many Nigerians from across the country have been reacting to the extension of the deadline for the currency swap and deposit by the federal government. After this extension, I don't expect the president to even give another ultimatum. You know, you should, anybody that fails to do the right thing should suffer the death penalty. All we have to do is to do the needful. It's indeed a welcome development. With the extension, will the Apex Bank be able to address the alleged scarcity of new narrow notes and concerns of Nigerians? Guests on Good Morning Nigeria will be speaking to these and more shortly. Thank you very much, Abu Salam Jibril, for that background report. We have uh, three guests here with us at the studios to uh, discuss issues around the extension of uh, the deadline for the deposit of the Adgoi Nara notes. Let's welcome uh, yet again Professor Uche Waleke, who is of the Finance and Capital Market Department at Nasarawa State University. Professor Waleke, we're glad to have you this morning. Thanks so much, Kiran. Uh, Thanks so much. Name is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, also, we have the studios Abu Bakar Ahmed Tanemu, a former banker, a lawyer, and human rights activist. We're glad to have you. Yes. Also in the studio is David Akoji, the Special Assistant on Strategic Communication to the Director General of the National Orientation Agency. He's also a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here this morning. All of you are regulars here on the program. <laughs> yes. yes. So it's okay, let's, let's begin with uh, Professor Uche Waleke. I've been somewhat concerned about the nomenclature for the program or the exercise that is ongoing. Yes, the CBN governor himself says it's a cash swap. Uh, but is it a misnomer? What, is this a cash swap? Because earlier, what we were told was that it wasn't necessarily the case that if you took your uh, Nara notes, the outgoing Nara notes to the bank, you will be given the equivalent. A swap would be I deposit my notes and then you give me, uh, or if you like, a swap and exchange, it actually would be the same thing uh, unless it is discounted. But in this case, we are told even you can bring in any amount that you have if you have a haul that uh, you kept in your wardrobe or you kept in a septic tank uh, over the years, 2 million, 10 million, bring it, they will accept it from you. But nobody is going to give you the equivalent of that 10 million. Initially, the, de the, uh, the restriction was for 100,000 for individuals on a weekly basis until it was then raised to 500,000 naira. So, in terms of nomenclature, is this a cash swap? Yeah, uh, thank, once again, thank you, uh, Kinsley. Um, I'm, I'm sure you remember that the term cash swap only surfaced recently, um, surfaced um, particularly since January 23. Uh, that was um, on Monday when the CBN began this um, uh, move to ensure that those in the rural areas, those in the rural communities also um, uh, you know, had the opportunity to exchange their, their, their money. So it was actually meant for those in the rural areas. The cash swap nomenclature is with respect to the program that the central bank, you know, um, started um, on January 23rd, you know, where it had to appoint, uh, from what we had, 30,000 agents, um, you know, super agents. And um, these are supposed to work with 1.4 million agents, you know, um, you know, all over the country. So, the people in the rural areas are meant to take their cash, you know, to these agents, who in turn would give them cash. So, it's cash swap. Okay? But again, the central bank also said that the maximum they could get under the circumstance, 10, you know, um, is uh, 10,000 naira. So, whatever you deposit in excess would be simply, you know, credited for you, you know, regarded as your, as your deposit. So, yes, in a sense, that's cash swap. Because if, if you took your your ten thousand to to the agents, they would give you ten thousand, you know, new notes. So it's cash. I swap. took you to uh, a money deposit bank. I took ten million to a money deposit bank. Will you, will you get ten? Would that million be a cash swap? No, no. But I've 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 I've, I've told you why it is called a cash swap. Cash swap yes, yes, if you take cash and they give you cash, of course, it's cash cash swap or notes swap. You know, as the case may be. But um, again, what um, the the program. Um, you know, um, it itself, it's um, actually uh, part of the package of um, currency redesign. Oh. Um, you know, the, the central bank um, is uh, doing to um, 
uh, as part of measures to promote cashless, um, you know, uh, e economy. Yes, you, you and I had a conversation on another fora on the uh, Naira redesign and the pressure on the government to extend the date. Did you see this coming? Oh yes, uh, <laughs> yes, I, I saw it coming. You see, we were under program. Um, I think we, we can file your program on Saturday, and I said that um, against the backdrop of um, the fact that the sensitization, the um, aw aw awareness, and all that the central bank, um, uh, you know, put in place, um, didn't quite start early. Uh, okay, against the backdrop of the fact that the cash flow program in particular didn't quite start early, against the backdrop of the fact that um, you know, um, if you before now, if you went to uh, banks, you would see queues, uh, queues at ATMs, you know, and so on. And the fact that the new Naira notes too, uh, you know, were not, um, um, uh, you know, while in circulation. So considering all these factors, that there was the need for the central bank to uh, make a slight adjustment. I want to underline that word, you know, slight, what I advocated, which eventually uh, came to pass. Um, is a slight adjustment, um, an adjustment that is not in excess of two weeks. I said maximum of two weeks, yes. provided it's also within or before the elections, uh, um, you know, such that uh, one of the objectives, even though it is not said, it's not put out there, one of the objectives is not um, defeated. And that's uh, using it to prevent or to reduce the incidence of, um, you know, vote, vote buying. And I also gave instances of um, what, um, you know, usually happens in... Um, um, you know, other climes or the experience of other countries that have also gone, gone down this route. And I've said, and I also said in that program, oh. that the moment you have this, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of a program, currency redesign, when you end it, you must announce, you must, you must uh, say what will happen to old notes that are still trapped, you know, out, out there. You gave an example of India. Yes, and I said, in the case of India, by the time they ended on 31st December 2016, they still said the, the old notes that they, they were trapped could be returned to the central bank, the central bank of India, the Reserve Bank of India. And interestingly, that's also what the Central Bank of Nigeria has said: that there's an extension to 10th of December when they will still be when they will still. 10th of February. Sorry, 10th of February. Um, um, I beg your pardon. When they will still remain legal tender, beyond 10th of February, between 10 and February and 17th of February, any note that is still out out there can still be brought to the central bank of nigeria yeah. so you have a grace another grace period of um, of, of seven days so i think is is um, welcome development it shows that the central bank is a responsive institution i i must emphasize um when they started the cash limit of twenty thousand, again people complained and said it was low central bank had to revise it um, upwards two hundred thousand uh, you know per day again that was in response to the earnings of the people and now um, the same ordinary folks too, who are in support of this policy and I must say that this policy is what is a policy that has become popular with the ordinary Nigerian because by the time you interview 10 Nigerians out there 9 out of 10 you know are likely to tell you that they support the policy so these same people that are in support of the policy you know are the people saying give us a little more time and the central bank um, um, you know has um, um, you know, yield that to their to their request. That's why I said the central bank, you know, is being responsive to the earnings of the people. And I must commend the central bank for for doing that. I'm also commending the president for giving the approval that the central bank, um, you know, should do this. So this this extension for me is in order. As I said, it's uh, not um, way. Um, it's not about six months extension has been demanded by the <coughs> national assembly, but a little extension to enable more money coming. Just as we have from the CBA governor, 75% of the sum, 2.7 trillion, you know, has come in. But they can, of, of course, do um, a lot better. In India, I think they achieved 86% um, success rate. So if we can achieve 86% or 90% success rate and mop them in, of course, that will be in the interest, um, you know, interest of the economy, no doubt. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Uche. Uh, let's bring in now Tanimo. Tanimo. Uh, are we missing uh, the uh, ultimate objectives of uh, the withdrawal of the 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira banknotes with the extension of the deadline for depositing those monies for those who still have them after 100 days? Absolutely. <coughs> um, 
ordinarily a lot of us we saw this as an opportunity for Nigerians to set a new trajectory in terms of the way cash are handled. Is a fact a lot of homes, a lot of farms, a lot of gardens you have cash stopped not only for vote buying, but some people they even lost confidence in the banking sector. You have a savings account, you are supposed to deposit money, you are supposed to be paid interest because you are creating the enabling instrument for the fund for the banks. The banks are globally for financial intermediation. They collect from the surplus, they give out loans and they make profit. What you discover is that banks are making enormous profit doing armchair banking. They sit in their offices, you take in your money, instead of you getting interest, what you receive on a daily basis. Charges. I just receive a charges. I just receive a lot now, maintenance fee, whatever fee they are being deducted are being deducted on a regular basis. And the CBN seems not to be doing anything. If you are if you are issued an ATM card what is the bank maintaining to debit you for maintenance charges? So we have a lot of charges going. So naturally, it has discouraged a lot of people from depositing their monies in the bank. That being said, we now have the class of the politicians, we will, and um, uh, the government officials and their uh, collaborators. They've looted the public funds. They've touched those uh, money. We thought uh, this is an opportunity for the CBN to now render those. Um, uh, stolen and looted funds, useless. But obviously, the 10 days extension to me, I don't even think is practicable. There will still be further extension because the central bank appears not to be ready. Ordinarily, this is a very serious policy that ordinarily from the beginning should be taken very seriously. There should be adequacy of the new Nera notes. If you go to banks in Abuja, I can tell you till this moment, most ATMs are no longer dispensing. The ones that are dispensing are still dispensing old notes. Who is sanctioning the banks? It appears that the CBN are left to the dictates of the bank. It's supposed to be the way, the other way around. The CBN is established by law, by the Buffet Act. They are supposed to be regulating the banks. But in this, uh, what we have in practical terms is that the regulators have jumped into the arena. You have NASA Microfinance Bank, you have NASA, the CBN are disbursing billions of Naira as loans. So who regulates and who inspects those loans? They've jumped the gun, they've put the card before the other, they are now participating and doing what the commercial bank, and you cannot um, separate the fact that the current CBN governor is from the regular commercial bank, is from Zenet Bank, he, he is still a shareholder in Zenet Bank, he plays a very important How do you expect a regulator that has direct link and is the appeal it applies to most of even those at the helm of affairs they have direct interface with these banks the essence of uh, most of the banks they are out there to make profit so anything that will not uh, make them to realize that they will not pay more attention to it if you go to parties you see them spraying B, uh, Nera, new Nera notes and you go to the banking <coughs> hall go to the ATM you cannot assess those notes for me the CBN are not prepared they are not prepared, so it's not about it's not about making laws. Are giving you saying policy. that there were gray areas they overlooked before a lot, announcing a the lot, policy? A lot. Ordinarily, there should be a test run if you are implementing a new policy, especially like a country like Nigeria, where you have rural populace that are not a very educated. A lot of local governments in Nigeria they don't have a single bank. Some you see them operating a single bank. Some don't even have at all. So you need a lot of timing, a lot of time to sensitize, to educate. You need a lot of time to test strong. Then you equally try to see how you, you are practically ready in terms of giving everybody equal opportunity. But now that is lacking. They are talking about using super agents. They are talking about using a point of sale. A lot of people in the rural areas, some of the businesses that they engage in, they don't believe in transfers. They want to see the money. They want to, you are taking their goods. Because if you look at it, banks, the, all the banks, they have challenges in terms of their IT infrastructure. All of us here are witnesses. You make transaction, you pay for it using your various channels of um, payment, uh, your uh, banking application. The, the, the customer, the, the trader that you are buying things from, is not getting immediate value. And you can be held up or you'll be asked to pay double. You, sometimes you make a transaction, your money will be deducted, and you wait, you go to the banking hall, you'll be joining queue just for you to get 
reversal. So part of the measures that the CBN ought to have taken is to work closely with uh, NITDA, to work closely with the Ministry of Digital Economy to ensure that banks have optimized their IT infrastructure in terms of personnel, in terms of the software they are using, in terms of um, the, the structures, so that there will be a seamless, a lot of, ordinarily everybody would have preferred the, uh, those that are earning legitimate income. They would prefer the digital um, uh, flow, but we don't have that, and that's a big problem. So the 10 days extension to me, and Nigerians could equally wait and see, there will be further extension until Nayonara nodes are deployed evenly, not only to those that are doing O1B that they have, because they are selling these monies. They are selling it. The DSS have made a lot of arrests, and the arrests will continue because a lot of people <coughs> in, in their need of Nera will just simply go and pay something extra to get the new Nera notes. But all the ones that, uh, just before Jumai comes in, I, I've, I've uh, seen some videos uh, where the new Nara notes were being spread. And, and usually, the typical way of spraying the Nara notes would be for them to be spraying it, and then it, uh, part of the abuse, which is, which of course is against the law, is for the Nara notes to fall on the, on the floor. But these new ones they are spraying, they are not allowing it to fall on the floor. No, they are giving it. Uh, they are just, so is it, is it, are, they, are they setting it up? They are spraying the person, the person will be holding it, the person, including one lady, you know, who was wearing a skimpy dress, they gave it to her, I quickly ensure that the thing did drop. So uh, why is that? Is this state managed or what? Because no, no. the typical way, you know, some of these reckless and lawless persons at parties, what they will do, they will take a bundle and then fling it. Yes. it again, that is a, that, that, is, that, that offends the law. But these ones, the videos that I have seen, they are spraying it gently, gently, and then the boy will say, we call it with both hands, and then put it inside his pocket. Why is it not falling on the ground? So, so many reasons account for it. If you look at the quality, some try to paint the new currency as being, and they use a coloration to just make it a little, a little bit different. So, in terms of quality, I have seen someone that has an experience of uh, leaving it in his um, clothes, and when they wash it, the whole. Uh, ink just went off and the, no, the that, money that, that one is from Oluwole. I have the new Nara note, it has not washed. <laughs> no, did, you you wash it? Have, did you put it in your wash room in your laundry <laughs> machine? Well, put, put a hundred dollar bill in your in your in your in your in your pocket and then put it in the washing machine and see what what happens to what happens to you. Then secondly, equally they are being mindful, unlike before where you have surplus of the old notes, this time around the, the new Nera notes is a very scarce commodity. So, so if you will, have it you just hold it close to yes. your Yes. Then one other thing I need to emphasize is that the C B N have not done enough in sanctioning those that spread money in the various um, parties. Hmm. Because if you are not sanctioning people you are equally encouraging encouraging them. Yeah, and who there, are there, the there are law enforcement officers at those parties. Uh, yeah, armed. The, sure, sure. Guiding yeah, and looking at it. But the CBN doesn't have arms. The CBN, I mean, they say that if an offense is being committed, you're a lawyer, if sure. an offense is being committed in your view, sure. you have the power of arrest. So, yeah. if, but you can only arrest those that uh, they are not above your means because the same security personnel that is standing there will give protection to those same persons that are abusing the yeah. network. Why are we holding the bag? Sure, <laughs> sure. Let's bring in Mr. <laughs> David Akwadi. <laughs> How much sensitization and education has the NOA done in conjunction with the CBN to ensure that even with this extension, people in the subnational, in the local governments will be, will be aware of the extension, one, and what they need to do? Because they say by, 20, by 17th of February, you take the money to the CBN. Will you get your money back? Uh, well... If you take it on the uh, before the tenth, up until the tenth of February, yes, you will get. But uh, after the after tenth, when it, it you know ceases to be a legal tender, it is those to whom you have put the money on deposit that will now take it to CBN. You know, like in the rural areas that you spoke about. Yes. You know. There are agents. You've been reaching out to the agents, the yes, yes, yes. national orientation agents. Absolutely. We've done extensive sensitization in the length and breadth of Nigeria okay. across the 36 states and the 704 local governments, working closely with the Central Bank uh, of Nigeria. Um, assistant directors, deputy directors, and directors of the Central Bank have also gone out. I'm sure you must have seen clips of them going to places. We have done desensitization in palaces of traditional rulers, in the markets. You know, we have visited um, various stakeholders 
to sensitize them. We have gone to border communities across the country and we have engaged uh, with all sorts of groups, you know, creating awareness with posters of the new Naira note and getting the people aware that they need to take their old Naira notes back, you know, to the bank. To really appreciate this policy that um, the CBN has come out with, we need to look at the intent, you know. And speaking yesterday, when the governor of the CBN went to visit uh, the president, he mentioned the key component of the intent. Uh, you have about 2.7 trillion out there outside of the financial system. That holds grave consequences for uh, the economy, for curbing inflation, you know, and for criminality, you know, and, and, and all of that. So, uh, in this period, the CBN had been able to bring back about 1.7 uh, trillion of that amount. That's what the professor is referring to as 75% uh, success. Um, people are going through challenges and difficulties. This is not a doubt. We have been getting feedbacks from across the country and we've been passing this feedback to CBN. What kind of feedback? Feedback, uh, not seeing the money at ATMs, not seeing the money across counters, uh, ATMs dispensing old Naira uh, notes. In the initial part of our sensitization, this were the feedback we were getting. It's when we pass this feedback to CBN that the CBN now sent out its own staff on the field to visit with banks to practically check those ATM machines and see if what people are saying is exactly what it is, to interface with operators of commercial uh, deposit banks to find out why this is happening, so what are the challenges and what needs to be done to solve uh, those challenges. And CBN was robustly out there all over the country, you know, with their senior officers doing all of this. Even the cash swap that's happening in the rural areas is also a response. And that's why I'm happy when the professor said C CBN has been very responsive in this period. The response to our feedback to say, in many of our rural areas, there are no banks. And so the poor folks in the communities, they are the farmers, <coughs> the herders, and the traders, the petty traders, were finding it difficult, you know, to take their money uh, back and then get the new, uh, the, the redesigned uh, Naira notes. But you see, this step that CBN has taken has opened a new vista. We are thinking that CBN should add to that uh, supply of the redesigned uh, Naira notes to microfinance banks. Because in many of these communities that don't have uh, deposit banks, they do have microfinance banks. banks. So if CBN also adds to this bouquet, of solution to solving this problem of scarcity, uh, to making the uh, uh, redesigned Naira notes available at microfinance, but it will go a long way, you know, to, to helping uh, out. So the objectives that the CBN has set out for itself uh, with the policy are largely being achieved. Many of the people who are crying and seeking extension beyond these 10 days that you are seeing, because there's still agitation for further Extension. extension even as we speak hmm. and not the folks in the rural areas it will not take them that long to change their old notes to the redesigned uh, notes once they become available as cbn is now pushing and making efforts for them to be available in those areas there are those who have stashed big money illegitimately acquired big money in funny places around the country that are seeking for more time so they can launder this money back into the system. system and if that is allowed to happen it will sabotage the key intent you know of ensuring that illegitimate money does not find its way back into our financial system and then begin to dis distort uh, financial uh, plans and focus and, and all of that uh, Akoji, thanks a lot and uh, some persons have also argued that uh, those with the illegal stash include terrorists and kidnappers and that they will also find an opportunity uh, to, as you said, launder this morning. I, I, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, Professor Waleke, that the poor or the rural poor is being invoked as uh, a rationale for the extension. The poor, the poor, the poor, rural poor. There are no roads to these rural poor areas. And we haven't sorted out those roads. Mm -hmm. The rural poor, they have no water. The rural poor, how many of them have access to primary health care centers? Oh. The rural poor, how many of them have access to good quality life? That you know, we are hearing everybody, uh, most persons say, oh, poor, poor, poor. And how much will you find in the hands of the rural poor? 
That's one. Second, at least, and I find the this has been a point that I've uh, uh, been uh, uh, pondering uh, since the the weekend when the extension was announced. One of the cardinal programs of the Buhari administration, and about which it, it beat his chest, the social intervention programs, SIP, conditional cash transfer, trade that money, mm -hmm. and all that. How were they doing those transfers to millions of people? Is it not the same, same poor, poor people? How we, are they, they had a register. Unless somebody is saying that, uh, no, that one doesn't really matter. They say poor people, conditional cash transfer. We are saying, how will they go to the bank? And David Akoji, you have raised the point that it won't take any rural poor 10 days for a cash swap. Yes. So, but I'm asking, because you know, we discussed this SIP program, trade that money, uh, then the uh, uh, conditional cash transfer mm. for the poorest of the, the poor. Price. How was that done? That now you want to change the notes and then everybody is uh, yelling on behalf of the rural poor that uh, the rural <laughs> poor. It's only yes. when they want to use the poor that yes. they now bring in the poor as an yes. excuse. Yes. Interestingly, this um, um, the CBN has also said that even those without bank accounts, you know, can have the opportunity of um, ex you know, exchanging their, their currency notes. Um, and of course, when you go bring your cash, uh, you're in the village, you now, you now bring your cash, you have the option to, to have this account uh, open, for, open for you. Mm -hmm. And that way you are increasing um, financial um, you know, inclusion, uh, which is also one of the uh, objectives. You know of this um, um, the policy. Um, one other thing too, the policy um, is geared towards achieving is to formalize the inf inf informal sector. We have a huge informal sector, you know, in this country, and many of them too in the rural rural areas. By the time you open accounts for them, you bring them into that um, that space, that financial uh, services space, and they can also have access to um, financial uh, services. And by the way, let's not also forget that the currencies that are being changed are the 200, 500, and the 1,000 Naira notes. 100 Naira notes, 50 Naira notes are still legal tender. And these are the currencies that you also find, you know, uh, used by these uh, rural, um, uh, 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 predominantly by the rural, by the rural folks. Okay. Uh, let me also make this point. Um, it's about the issue of... Um, you know, uh, pilot facing the uh, fellow. First of all, pilot testing a, a program <coughs> before you, f you, you know, before you the launch. yeah, before the launch. Um, um, you know, as as was mentioned here, um, I need to point out that the currency redesign um, uh, initiative is part of a larger program of the uh, central bank, the cashless um, or cash light um, policy, and it actually began in 2012. It didn't begin today. The cashless policy began in 2012. And when, at the time that uh, it was begun, the central bank um, started it well, in Lagos. So Lagos was also used as a pilot um, test area. The following year, it was extended to six other um, states, I think, Anambra, Rivers, um, uh, you know, uh, Kanu, Ogun State, you know, some other states. So the central bank has been doing it in um, phases. And um, as such, that remember too that in 2012, about 2012, the, uh, the banks, you know, represented the, the major um, channel of um, financial services for many. Okay? Mm -hmm. Today, we have a, 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 a plethora of uh, channels. You have um, POS, you have ATM, you, have, you can do electronic transfer. So, so they are all there. And that is, um, um, you, you know... Um, uh, progression of the um, initiatives the central bank um, uh, you know introduced since 2012 okay so what I'm saying is that the currency <coughs> design is not um, um, it's, it's not um, a standalone it's part of the cashless policy program of the central bank but it's just that this time it has some other objectives which it intends to achieve one of which is to enable the central bank you know uh, get a hold on money supply the central bank doesn't have a hold on money supply, the currency out there. Of course, the effectiveness of monetary policy, you know, becomes in doubt. Okay, which is why I expect that going forward, the central bank will be in a st stronger position 
to implement um, uh, a monetary policy. Apart from the issue of um, the uh, discouraging uh, terrorism financing, um, uh, even corruption and so on, the major purpose that this is serving is to arm the central bank to be in a position to implement you know, monetary policy. But there is this other aspect too we are not emphasizing, which in my view is very critical, is important. Uh, the central bank has said that um, uh, in monitoring this exercise, this, the EFCC, ICPC, you know, should be involved, and of course the National Orientation uh, Agency. But I also think that the Federal Inner Revenue Service should also be involved, um, uh, because again, using country experiences, if you, um, I still go back to um, India. What happened in India was that after the the currency redesign exercise, okay, government revenue, you know, increased. Part of what it was meant to achieve was to, um, you know, tackle tax evasion. Tax evasion was high in India at the time. Um, uh, um, tax to GDP ratio in India at the time was 17%, even though it was relatively higher than what we have today, 6 7, 7%. But they, they said they thought it was low because they were then comparing that with the average uh, for OECD countries at, at, at that time at 34%. And studies at that time had shown in India that just one percent of um, those who were, you know, eligible taxpayers, you know, uh, uh, pay tax. So the Prime Minister Modi then introduced this as a way to check tax evasion, and to a large extent, you know, um, uh, he succeeded. So I am saying that people who make deposits beyond a certain threshold should also be required to produce their tax clearance. You know, you have huge tax-free cash stashed away in homes. Okay, when people make these deposits and you have a threshold, is is they should be asked, have you paid tax on it? How much tax have you? What paid? is the threshold that you are suggesting? Yes. Yes. If I go and dump one hundred million now, what is the threshold? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's for it's for it's, it's for it's for them Say, to determine. I'm only if, saying if I if. Yeah. If that if is very yeah. good because I don't want them to come up to us. I, 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 I don't want them say, to say we have 100 yeah. million. No, I didn't say <laughs> that I will go and uh, dump or that I have dumped. They can check. Yeah. I said if, I, okay, let me even say if I dump 1 billion, wow. yeah. what will be the threshold? For yes. them to come after after the person, not after me. Yes, <laughs> of course. Keep, we have, what he's saying <laughs> yes. is very important. Precisely. Uh -huh. um, it is. No, it is. The it is. Federal Inland Revenue Service <clears throat> is actually thinking along that line okay uh on a long-term basis not just within this short period of uh naira redesign um to be optimal and effective in tax collection and to broaden our tax net certainly federal inland revenue will need to look in this direction you are talking about Absolutely. on a broad scale mm -hmm. if all the money goes back to the banks mm -hmm. it means it's possible to see who has what you understand yeah. it means platforms can be put in place that will enable all manner of authorities who have access to monitor what you have in your account what i have in my account and immediately that will drop the incidence of tax evasion because if you have monies in your account that have not been appropriately taxed assessed for tax then it's easy for federal inland revenue to see it and to know and to ask okay what is the source Okay. of this and evaluate and know okay this is taxable and you have not paid the tax thank you so very much we have taken this portion you know as tax yeah. so all of these policies are working towards you know making our country far better than it is today if there's adequate revenue from tax and tax is doing very well for us right now yes. federal inland revenue uh, last year i think hit a threshold of about uh, 10 trillion yeah. Yeah. which has never happened in the history of our country in terms of tax collection thanks to some of the initiatives that are being put in place <laughs> by the current management of the federal inland um, revenue, revenue service and we are working closely with them also to expand tax awareness and to also sensitize people on the need to pay um, tax so it's gradually paying off and it's driving to that position that you are describing in, in addition to uh, FRS uh, that you have also introduced as one of the uh, key watchers of this exercise this of i imagine also that the nfiu as mm. the financial intelligence unit mm. uh could also be a monitor it, that's it it's, it's clear if money legitimate come on deposit no problem yeah. it legitimate if you are a kidnapper you are a terrorist you come and tell us you know how you got that money uh, and so on and so forth uh, tell me, I, I want to come back 
to the issue which I raised, and the uh, prof didn't quite address it. To say uh, the the alibi that is being raised on behalf of the rural poor, uh, just opposed us with what we saw during the conditional cash transfer and trade that money. And it, it went on smoothly. No, no quarrel. And it was the poorest of the poor. So uh, why is it that now uh, the alibi of rural poor has come and everybody is virtually doing deafened except those who are crying on behalf of the rural poor? Um, thank you very much. You have to look at it from a multifaceted <coughs> angle. It's not only about changing and swapping the currency. These rural poor, they are involved in businesses and the business is a continuous one for that matter. A lot of them are unbanked. They don't have bank accounts. Some of them, they don't have access to phones, the regular phones that me and you have and we don't have taken for granted, not to talk of the in poor internet uh, service. So if you are even changing the currency for now, what happens in the couple of uh, months ahead? For conditional cash transfer for your NEPA bill during election, you can easily get to the rural area because they are not the main um, beneficiary. It is the politicians that wants to use them. So now when it's for them to be able to now have access to government policies, government activities, it will be naturally be difficult. So it's not about only um, changing the money, as I said earlier, or swapping the currency in the currency. The, the, the fear being envisaged, a lot of people, they are thinking of what will be the aftermath of all this um, policy. If this is a good opportunity for the CBN now to like put pressure on banks, to have banks in at least every local government. What we have at the moment is that we have over-concentration of banks in the, in the city, city, yeah, city centers. You can go to a, a particular road network and you see five banks. Ordinarily, by the policy of bank, there's supposed to be space, as in so that a lot of people will have access to bank. The, the rural dweller will be more comfortable where he will walk into the banking hall, they will check his balance, he has 5,000, he wants to take 1,000 to go and engage in a business. But when you tell him that, um, it's truly POS, and the POS, the, the further the, 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 the location, the higher the charges. Even in Abuja here, some people will charge you 200 Naira for a 10,000 Naira transaction. Some of us in the season, I will take that charges for granted, but those in the rural areas, they are not comfortable. Can't if they can't Naira. lose 200 Naira for a transaction, and in the rural area, it's even more expensive. So what are the CB? And you ask the um, POS operator, why is it that you are charging so high and he will tell you that it is the bank that bulk of the money goes to the bank so the cbn as a regulatory agency they are supposed to ensure that there is a cap that nobody is allowed to go if they are really and truly encouraging cashless policy there must be a cap on those charges so that people will be encouraged so the issue of people now crying on behalf of the poor the poor now have now found it very easy that's why I said the issue of um, the Ministry of um, this whole po policy. There is a need for synergy, synchronization. The re relevant stakeholders should all be brought on board so that everybody has a role to play. The Ministry of Digital Economy has a role to play. The Ministry of Science and Communi uh, Technology has a role to play. The, a lot of stakeholders, they all have in, in, to ensure that this policy is seamless. So if that is not done, you will continue to have this who and cry coming from the poor and those that want to use the poor now that are complaining on their behalf mostly in some of these uh, cries are coming from the politicians this time around because they are the ones that will be engaging they are vote, the ones with, the but with the money to engage in vote and um, buying right. and now the processes will now become somehow cumbersome and it will be very difficult for them to engage in it then so you made mention of nifu this um, they, this is an opportunity for them to play the critical role they have been established. Ordinarily, there's a system in the banks that the moment you deposit above the threshold, an automatic report is generated and sent to EFCC. To, 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 yeah, EFCC and that's why they can now monitor to see those who are evading tax and they should be able to question those who have suddenly become billionaires and they cannot really show you any business that they are doing to generate such kind of fund. But what we have found over time is that nobody seems to be paying any attention 
on that in this country you write petitions i'm telling you this as a lawyer you write petition to efcc you write petition to relevant agency they don't take your petition serious then you will tell me was that at times you see clients paying doing all sorts of things to get that petition to be taken seriously so there's this um, apathy a lot of people are being discouraged for even blowing this we've seen whistleblowers being punished because the relevant agencies are not doing what they are supposed to be doing so now <coughs> all this will be in their eyes they are seeing it but the question should be what will be the aftermath so part of the engagement and the policy drive is to engage all stakeholders and as you know that at the end of it all they are supposed to start asking questions the tax uh, authorities they are supposed to now asking question as regards have you paid relevant tax on those uh, monies the prosecuting agency the ministry of justice the police everybody should now be involved to now say okay you've made this money you've deposited this money you've laundered this money you've played this money come and give account then when people start seeing sanctions and consequences for the actions nigeria will be better for it is there a possibility that can happen here in nigeria well, the fact of the matter is nfiu is actually doing a lot of these things he's talking about mm -hmm. we know this for a fact there's uh, an interministerial committee uh, on uh, against terrorism financing and money laundering and the national orientation agency is co-chair of the advocacy and capacity building subcommittee of that interministerial committee so we know what nfiu uh, is doing um, you cannot take the entire spectrum in one fell swoop you know so the threshold of monitoring now is somewhat high you understand to deal with that because where you have problems that are happening in bulk like that you you approach that first and resolve those ones and tackle them before you now begin to scale down and then you get to the bottom you know of the ladder so this approach is being uh, deployed uh, is going to be complemented by awareness creation so that we all become involved you know we all watch and, and make reports so this is was the NLO brought in at the initial announcement of the policy or you were brought in halfway into it <laughs> no, you don't make me to answer that <laughs> question you know, because what we're talking is, about education yeah what it and is, is at the it, moment as yes. i speak with you mm. we're working uh with the cbn and the efcc and icpc are with you on the enlightenment campaign too are they with uh, no 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 they are doing the their own mandate their own mandate is to monitor you'll be surprised there have been funny reports of people taking one billion uh, cash to banks mm. to open account for the purpose of depositing those cash and it raises red flags so that's the responsibility now of icpc and efcc to enter in and investigate the sources of such money that were outside the banking system and that are being forced to come back presently as a result of the Naira redesign policy. So that's the mandate of um, EFCC and ICPC. For us, is to create awareness and to sensitize people across the length and breadth of this country well, on these issues. Akoji, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I just also need to throw this in. Gentlemen, you've touched on it uh, briefly. The suggestions with regard to FROS, and the role of NFIU, ICPC, EFCC, and all that would also apply to proxy depositors. Proxy depositors. If Jumai has two billion, I was bragging about one billion. Jumai has two billion, and she says, "Look, Kingsley, <laughs> I, I let me deposit five hundred million in your account." I would say, "Okay, no problem." Come, mm. I mean, since the, my account is flat, so yeah. five hundred comes into my account, then I become also liable to the FROS. Then, of course, uh, red flags that uh, NFIU. I would hope that uh, the appropriate agencies are also taking note of this. Uh, usually, usually in the course of normal banking transactions, uh, if, if your account uh, uh, has never exceeded a certain threshold in terms of receipts or expenditure, and then suddenly uh, you have a windfall, uh, banks normally would delay uh, in processing the, that, that kind of transaction. They try to uh, be sure that uh, this isn't dead legitimate money. So, so this is this is part of what is going to be. If people have been approaching you as a proxy to say, look, just uh, accept this. The FRS is watching you. NFIU is watching you. So if they come knocking at your door, don't say, hey, hey my enemies are after me. <laughs> They're watching Good Morning Nigeria, the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll continue with the conversation.
you clean your teeth every morning but that fresh breath feeling just doesn't last the answer easy you keep your teeth strong and healthy and give your mouth long lasting fresh breath with new oral b to win one two things it helps strengthen your teeth and gives you long lasting fresh breath so fresh still fresh and still fresh stay strong stay fresh new oral b toothpaste for strong teeth and long lasting fresh breath Dialogue, empathy, love and unity. These are vital components of nation building. For all to be well, we appeal that we should refrain from volatile, provocative, inciting messages and language. Let's build and not destroy. Welcome back and you're watching Good Morning Nigeria. We'll be discussing about the extension of the deadline for the old Naira notes and issuance of the new Naira notes. Let's bring in Professor Owaleke. I, I, I want you to clarify something here. If, if this money is taken to the bank in, or the extension, after the extension they said you can still take money to the CBN, is it going to, are you going to get money back? For the money you're taking to the CBN after the tenth of February, or is it just okay. you are taking to the CBN and your money is gone? You're not getting anything in return. I want okay. our viewers to understand this okay. because when they say extension of ten days yes. and then they're extending to seventeen, yes. so if you take your money to the CBN, are you getting the new naira notes back, or you're losing your money? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, first, um, let's begin with the extension. The deadline. Of January 31st has been extended to uh, February 10. Oh. Now what that means is that the old notes are still legal tender. Legal tender means that you can still use it to buy and sell. And on that note, I wish to appeal to this uh, to the central bank to um, continue to send out this message that old notes are still legal tender to February 10. You know, uh, such that people don't. You know, get, you know, continue to reject them because as we speak, the old notes are being rejected. So uh, the, the the message should be out there that legal tender means people can still use them, you know, for their daily you know transactions up till February 10. Now, once we get to February 10, all those um, old notes, 200, 500, and 1,000, will cease to be legal tender. In other words, you can no longer use them. You know, in your uh, for your for your for your transactions. February eleventh. Yes, February eleventh. Yes, it's, uh, it will end on tenth. From February eleventh, it's no longer legal tender. But the central bank can still accept them. Central bank has a, a, a you know a grace period, a window you know that says between eleventh of February and seventeenth of February, those notes can still be brought to the central bank. Okay, and what that means is that if you take those notes to the central bank. Usually, um, I, I suspect that you'll be, you'll be given a form to declare. That you have to make a declaration mm -hmm. of the monies you're depositing. Okay? And, of course, thereafter, the central bank can, um, what I think will happen, will now open an account, you know, for you. It can be in error account. Remember, the in error is the liability of the central bank. This time, you're not taking it to the commercial banks. If you take your deposit to the commercial bank, your deposit is, your, is the liability of the commercial bank. Okay? But when you take to the central bank and um, the inner wallet is um, opened um, for you, that becomes the liability of the central bank. In other words, you can still, um, uh, you know, transact, you know, with the inner. So you are not losing any money if you take your money to the central bank between 11th and um, um, 17th. Um, as I said, the uh, central bank can, um, um, you know, open an account for you, uh, for you to also also use. And let me also say. 
the good money or don't want to disturb anybody with 5,000 deposit at the CBN. You know, my uh, Juba, yeah. Juba, yeah. don't want to disturb anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Juba has 2 billion. Yeah. And yeah. Kixi has 1 billion. We, Central Bank is just around the corner here. Yeah. We will work there. If you, have, if you have small change, don't go and disturb the CBN. Yeah. But the focus is on the small change. The first change. component yeah. of uh, this CBN policy, Kingsley, is this. Um, there's been raised this question of uh, if by the 11th of February, the old currency ceases to be legal tender. Uh, tender. Mm. Now, you know, um, people are in far-flung areas and they have designated places like this agent, super agents and all of that for the rural folks who would take the old Naira to that place. Those ones need to carry the bulk of the old Naira they've received to a bank or to some sort of place to get their value uh, back also. Mm. You know, this may not happen on the same day as the old Naira becomes, ceases to become uh, legal. So there has to be a window for all of this category of banks and, you know, agents and all of that to also have time to take back to the CBN. You know, these old Naira notes that is well, in their custody. Well, if you, once you create many windows, you get mosquitoes in. <laughs> and with all kinds of mosquitoes. No, but, uh, the it, it, but the CBN uh, needs to explain. Yeah, 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 that is normal. I, I, record, I recognize that. Yes. What it, mm. That's a transition period. Yes. yes. It's a transition period. Mm. So deadline is on the 10th of February. Mm. Uh, so if it ends. Look, 10th of February is next week. Mm. Next week. Mm -hmm. That's next week, Friday. Mm. Mm. So whatever, and everybody, you, you've been sensitizing people. So whatever you need to do, do it before the tenth, including the super agents. Yes. And, and by the way, by the way, gentlemen, you know, we, we, we sometimes we uh, tend to neglect some of our social cultural practices, even in money transactions. There are persons in the rural areas, even in the some urban areas, who have no bank accounts, but they pay a social. There is a collector who goes around, who takes a record. Of everybody and says maybe that's the one they are giving a big name now a super agent and mm -hmm, so on and so forth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the man is trust trust is a cardinal element mm -hmm. in the operation of that system so the same persons could actually go around and say look you have money i, I know you i will take your uh, this, you say they are, they are poor so they will not have the kind of money that uh, uh, Jumai and I will have, mm -hmm. uh, yes. or, or that Tanimo as a lawyer will have. So, you, you will take uh, uh, Did we mind. utilize that system mm -hmm. before we don't start crying about Rura for, for 100 days? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then tomorrow, I, I don't know, that's mm -hmm. that's one leg of it. The other leg, I, I want to raise this uh, very quickly, uh, and it has to do with uh, the whole concept of uh, this withdrawal of. Uh, the hundred, two, sorry, 200, 500, and 1,000 Naira notes. The CBN said it's a part of a cashless policy. I recognize that since the old are going and the new notes were going to be circulation uh, concurrently, then it meant that at some point you will have both of them. And people were concerned that they were still receiving uh, old notes from the ATM. Okay. If you go to the ATM, it means that you have an ATM card. Yes. It means you can engage in a transaction. But have people recognized that the cashless policy and what will happen after the deadlines, whether extended or not extended, you are likely to have less cash in circulation. Mm. And therefore get used to the fact now that yeah, I haven't seen the new data, I haven't seen that you are not likely to be having Both. tons of cash mm. in yes. your hands. Except for those who are doing all kinds of illicit business. Are we recognizing this fact, uh, Tanimo? Ordinarily, that should have been what we should have at play. But as I said, there are operational challenges. You will not be happy if you go to a store, you have 20,000 Naira and you have done purchases, maybe it's hard, you have done purchases of 20,000 and you made a payment through your POS, your account is debited. But the value was not um, given to the it was not credited and you'll be you'll be you'll be you'll be trapped it happens to me personally no, 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 I, I don't understand what you're saying well you are you have just twenty thousand in your account mm -hmm. you don't purchases for twenty thousand mm -hmm. you give them your your atm the debit the your card mm -hmm. the 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 key in you are debited it happens your account was debited, but the equivalent value was not given to the to trader, the to the, yeah. And uh, the, that means they didn't it receive credit. It doesn't get an alert. 
you, you, you can check your app you, because we have that challenges in all the banks, no exception. So what will happen? You, the, what will likely happen is for you to ask your relative, your wife, to send you an additional 20,000 because they will tell you that until they receive value, they are not releasing their goods. And it's for you now to go and resolve with the banks. A lot of people, right now, if I'm leaving, I'm going to the bank. You have pending debits that they are, the, the, the reversal is not automated. So the CBN, the focus as they are implementing these policies, the focus should now may, should be more in terms of urging banks, ensuring that bank optimize their IT infrastructure in terms of personnel, in terms of software procurement. Most of the challenges that we have is peculiar to Nigeria because the way we do our things is quite different from other clients. So until we accept that fact, I've seen a situation where the banks, a bank will go to a software developer, just just give me the, 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 the skeletal functional software, then give me the complete package because they are trying to save cost. And the CBN, the needs that are not there to supervise and regulate to ensure that a bank making declaring billions of naira's profit, why can't you develop and uh, put some substantial amount of money in terms of building your IT infrastructure? I believe you. If you believe me that if you have an optimal and functional digital uh, economy working, as in terms of transactions as seamless, a lot of people will not want to even be carrying cash. We hear then most they, of the tech people have japa out of the country. They are. They are, they are, they are, they are the banks are in yes, trouble. The, banks are in trouble. Yes. the software, they don't have adequate software, they don't have adequate personnel. Then there's this other angle that we are not even looking at. A lot of fraudulent activities are going on and nobody is held accountable. And these things can only happen with the connivance of the bank. Because your details are there, they can simply share it with their uh, will be collaborators. And once they have access to it, I've seen a lot of instances where the bank will now put you at the receiving end. The CBN should put in policies that we call it sanction banks for making the processes to be that um, easy for fraudsters to be able to hack into your account. So a lot of people mm -hmm. have discovered. I have a professor that told me blankly that Ahmed, I cannot use. My main account doesn't have ATM and is not connected to any online. And I tried to encourage him. He said, no, that they've, they've taken my money. I did not subscribe to any uh, messages, spam messages that was sent. And my money was taken. I went to the bank. After a series of investigation, nothing came out of it. To be on the safer side, I decided to open an account for transaction purposes and another account for my salaries and everything. That one is not tied to any. And still, we still have instances of even that same account being hacked into. So until that is uh, taken care of, a lot of people, they are they, they know that as a matter of fact that we are, if you take, a, you bought a, a cab, you take um, Kekena Pep, a lot of people have started moving towards the digital, but the challenges are there. And until we resolve that challenges, you'll be discouraged because if enlightened people in Abuja and Lagos are having these challenges, what will now be of someone that doesn't have a single bank in his location and maybe he has to go to the state capital to make complaints. He's complaining of 5,000 when the transport fare down to and fro to the citizen. So you just leave it and we have that instance. Yeah. Well, well thank you, uh, Tadimo. Uh, fraud in the banking system has always been around. Yeah. Uh, probably just exacerbated now uh, with the intrusion of, of ICT. Uh, I've heard this said in the course of all of this uh, withdrawal of uh, bank notes and so on and so forth. There is probably no local government area in Nigeria, 774, with the exception of those impacted by terrorist activities, where there is no bank. In Bono, 22 local governments don't uh, have banks. Uh, uh, that's, no, no, I said impacted. That's, 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 Kano is peaceful, but there are local government without that, that, That's a war zone. That's mm, a war, that's zone. A war zone. zone. Yeah, so if yeah. Kano is there, so what, what, what incentive or disincentive uh, was there for banks not to have open branches? In those locations, one issue I would like uh, Akoji to uh, touch on briefly. See, our policy ecosystem. Why do we sometimes not think through and work on scenarios before giving what would turn out to be unrealistic deadlines? You think every time, every time, go and do something. The Nigerians, no, 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 extend, no, 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 extension, 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 extension. Well, no, no, extension. must extend. The PVC, Allied, extension. Allied to this question, 
is what can be done about a Nigerian behavior of waiting until the last minute before seeking to comply with a clear directive. The problem, Kingsley, is not with the policies. It's with our responsiveness as citizens. And you hit the nail right on the head. We have this last minute approach to everything. Knee jerk approach. When the deadline is upon you, that's when you wake up and realize the urgency of a need to go and do what you need to do necessitated by a policy. That behavior needs to change. It reflects even in our attendance to meetings. Mm. You know, it reflects in our attitude to life in this country. And it has a cost, you know. Um, if, for instance, we have strong character leadership that says, okay, there will not be any extension. And then you will begin to see civil so let the fall. Yes, you begin to see protests. You know, mm -hmm. and people will not admit the fact that they did not make good when the time was available to do so. It's deeply ingrained in the character of citizens in this country, and it is wrong. That's not the practice in other places. A deadline is supposed to be a deadline. Mm. And once you know that this is the deadline, you, then you work towards beating that deadline. That's the purpose of the deadline, so that you work towards not exceeding you know, that period. In countries like Britain and the United States, for admissions, deadline is deadline. If they say admission closes on a particular date in the university At in the UK, time. yes, and you decide to go after that time, you are out. You go and wait for another uh, session and reapply or something like that. So I'm thinking that in addition to sensitization for people to keep to time, you know, to also do what needs to be done and not procrastinate, we need to see a season where people pay the price for not keeping to such uh, deadlines. Mm -hmm. And then that will bring about a reawakening in the consciousness of people, we always sit back in the expectation that there would be a shift in deadline. For the delay. Yes, but, but before we come in, Prof, let me just say this. Is it in the media industry, when you say you have a deadline, yeah. it means that if you do not meet that deadline, your copy or your story will not be accepted. Yes. It means that if you don't cross the line at the time given, you or your copy, not you now, your copy is dead. Sure. Yes, um, yes, deadline should be deadline, but not in all circumstances. Um, so why is it in, in the first place? Yes, in my, in my view, um, deadlines are not cast in stone. Um, a regulator should always be flexible. Uh, if you look at the circumstances, you know, surrounding an issue, you should be able to say whether you know, a, a shift um, um, is required. I'm saying that flexibility is also part of, um, um, you know, uh, decision making. Why not encouraging the last minute um, approach to issues, you know, by Nigerians? Um, like the case of um, INEC, for example, shifting um, the collection of PVCs by, by one week. Of course, that's, um, that can be justified. Um, even this present case of um, extending the deadline for uh, the cash swap it, it is, is also justified and I've given you the justification the uh, preparations for the the cash swap pro program di didn't really comment you know in time so in that kind of c circumstance you you don't have a choice but to but to extend um, on the issue of um, branches um, bank branches that um, you know you are mentioning you said um, every part of the country is expected to have a ba bank um, a branch, I think it is it is mentioned here. I think the world is moving away from the from brick and mortar banking, you know, as it were, from having branches um, all over the over, all over the place. In um, uh, uh, places like uh, Shanghai, for example, I'm sure you've seen the video, um, you know, where uh, residents of Shanghai will tell you that um, many of them will tell you they had uh, not seen cash, cash in in, in, um, a, long in a long time. Okay. So the, the practice now is to use more of agents. And that is why the, uh, so far we are told that there are 1.4 million agents uh, nationwide. You have um, other channels. Um, you have 900,000 POS. You have uh, 14,000 ATM machines. You know, the, uh, the going by data from uh, the central bank. So I think the issue is to ramp up these um, um, channels and fortify them. And in the process also strengthen infrastructure. Yes, the issue of weak infrastructure will remain a challenge, but we can't say until we'll, uh, uh, you know, 
um, achieve per perfection in um, uh, infrastructure in the country before we begin to introduce them. <coughs> introduce the, these things. Um, um, it's a gradual thing and again just as you said the central bank is intending to, t to take out 2.7 trillion naira you know from the um, circulating outside the banks. I don't in, uh, expect the central bank to also print 2.7 trillion you know in return because by so doing the, the, pro um, the purpose will be defeated. Mm -hmm. uh, the cashless doesn't mean that there won't be cash transactions at all. No. Um, a cashless policy, if you like, call it cash light, simply means that you carry very little cash. And that's why we have this, um, um, you know, cash withdrawal limits. But Nigerians don't know how to carry small cash. They like, yes. you know, carrying so big cash. So yeah, that, that is the orientation. That is what we now want to <laughs> change. Money. Yes, one should be able to uh, use many, uh, many of the uh, channels now available to, um, you know, conduct transactions, not necessarily cash. have turned to those channels yes. in this period. Okay, and due yeah, to the know, pressure from the National exactly. Assembly, mm. gentlemen, do we likely will do we likely see an extension? No, I don't foresee an extension. And by the way, let me seize an opportunity to appeal to the National Assembly. Let me appeal to them. National Assembly again is another responsive um, institution. I don't also blame some of the members there. They are under pressure too from their constituents um, who tell them, uh, "What are you guys doing? Why don't you ensure that this thing is extended?" Um, so I understand that, but again. Uh, in the national interest, I say in the national interest, the public interest, because only recently, uh, Kinsley, some people took the, uh, even the Prime Minister of India to court. Uh, they said there were 58 petitions, you know, against the Prime Minister uh, for the, the monetization exercise that was conducted since way back in 2016. And the petition has said that um, they faced a lot of hardship, some, some people died and so on. <laughs> yes. And then, um, uh, you know, so they took the government to court. But the Supreme Court in India, the courts, you know, um, of course, ruled them against and said that personal interests, I want to quote them, personal interests, you know, should, should be uh, subjugated, um, uh, in, you know, uh, it should not be over and above no, the, no, the no, public it's interest. It's and which is also what I see playing out here. So National Assembly should, um, uh, you know, uh, and all other stakeholders should cooperate to ensure that um, this, um, uh, you know, policy is a success. We, we, okay. we, we are pressed for time. Yeah, we are pressed for uh, 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 time. There, were, there have been all kinds of funny videos out there. Uh, I'm sure these are skits or uh, whatever uh, it, the intention is, but it looks like it, will be, it could be bad business for see and buy in the course of the elections. Because some persons are purporting uh, to add blue to the uh, outgoing 1,000 oh, yeah. note, and then it becomes uh, a new one, and then add another die to and so on and so forth. It's possible that during the course of the C and buy, which is a criminal offence, by the way, don't uh, don't pr don't partake in it. If they give one thousand naira notes, people will reject it and say that we don't know whether this one is Zulu or Le, as to say whether it's genuine or whether it is fake. <laughs> so they have to reduce the uh, quantum of uh, notes that you carry during the course of that uh, process. And there, of course, will be EFCC uh, officials all around uh, to be sure that uh, there is no corruption of the electoral process. It's been a very interesting conversation this morning, and we'd like to thank all our three guests who've been with us. Professor Uche Waleke of Nasarawa State University, thank you for being around. Thank you. Abu Bakar uh, Tanebo, former banker, lawyer, human rights activist, we appreciate your comments. Thank you for having me. David Akoji, the Special Assistant on Strategic Communication to the DG of NOAA. Always a delight having you on Good Morning Nigeria. It's my pleasure all the time. Let's go over now to the foreign desk. Tunisia's president and his shaky decade-long experiment with democracy are facing an important test as voters cast ballots in the second round of parliamentary elections. Turnouts was just over 11% in the first round of voting last month as many disaffected Tunisians stayed away and the influential opposition Islamist party boycotted. The runoff elections are being watched around the Arab world. They are seen as a conclusive step in President Kais Saeed's push to consolidate power, tame Islamist rivals, and win back lenders and investors needed to save the teetering economy. Unemployment tops 18%, the soaring budget deficit has led to shortages of staples, and the International Monetary Fund has frozen talks on a much-awaited new loan for the Tunisian government. The 
police unit that included the Memphis officers involved in the fatal beating of Tyre Nichols has been disbanded as more protests took place in the United States a day after the video of the attack was released. In a statement, the police department said it was permanently deactivating the Scorpion unit after the police chief spoke with members of Nichols' family, community leaders and other officers. Consisting of 40 officers, the Scorpion unit was launched in November 2021 to target violent crime. Five officers involved in the beating, all blacks, were charged on Thursday with murder, assault, kidnapping and other charges. All have been dismissed from the department. And that has been Good Morning Nigeria for today. Join us tomorrow for another insightful edition of the program. I am Jumma Yusuf. And I'm Kingsley. Yusuf. Hello. Do have a nice day. <laughs>